Hearing Officer Kaywood. Good afternoon. Uh, everyone's here. We're ready to proceed in the matter regarding Dorhe. Thank you. Uh, before we get going, I just would like to say that I understand that we have observers on the line. We're happy to have you. This is a public proceeding, but but it is a legal proceeding. So keep yourself on mute. And if anyone interrupts the proceeding, I will uh, disconnect you from the call. Thank you. Officer Huerta, please proceed. Thank you, Hearing Officer Kaywood. Good afternoon. I am Officer Huerta with the San Francisco Police Department's Vicious and Dangerous Dog Unit. Today is Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, and the time is 1240 hours. I'm calling the matter of Dorje, A number 420764. This hearing is being audio recorded. If anyone would like a copy of the recording, contact me, and that can be made available at a later date. In attendance, we have Captain Corso with the San Francisco Animal Care and Control, Hearing Officer Ms. Kaywood, Hearing Clerk Ms. Polk. At this time, I'd like your attention with the Hearing Officer, Ms. Kaywood. Good, good afternoon. I'm Janelle Kaywood. I'm an independent hearing officer designated by the Department of Public Health to conduct and decide this case. The issue I'll decide today is whether Dorje, the dog in question, is vicious and dangerous under Article 1, Section 42 of the San Francisco Health Code, and what remedy, if any, should be imposed on the dog owner to address public safety issues. Officer Irvin Huerta of the San Francisco Police Department's Vicious and Dangerous Dog Unit will set the order in which witnesses will be called. So these hearings are ordinarily held in room 408 in San Francisco City Hall, but in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're temporarily conducting these hearings by telephone conference call. Uh, and this is in order to protect the health and well-being of all the hearing participants. Please note that this hearing will be audio recorded and will be part of the administrative record for this case. For this reason, it's very important that we do not interrupt one another. Although this is an informal proceeding, it is a legal proceeding and everyone has a designated time to talk. So if someone on the line says something that you disagree with, just make a note of it rather than interrupting and I'll circle back to both the complainant and the dog owner later in the hearing. Both the complainant and the dog owner will have multiple opportunities to address me. And just periodically, the city officials on the line will uh, need to interject, as will I. Uh, that is not a license for it, this to turn into a free-for-all, uh, so please wait your turn to speak. Note, note that this, uh, the process of these proceedings in the order of presentation will be as follows. The police department will give a brief opening statement. The complainant will testify first, followed by any witnesses testifying for the complainant. The dog owner and the dog owner's witnesses will testify next. Both the complainant and the dog owner will be allowed to give a three minute rebuttal or make closing comments. Um, and finally, I'll ask both the police department and the Department of Animal Care and Control if they have a recommendation about the case. Each department will get one opportunity to make a recommendation. Now, Recommendations are just that. Uh, that the agencies on the line have experience, uh, but ultimately the final decision is mine. If either department does make a recommendation, both the dog owner and the complainant uh, will have an opportunity to briefly respond to the recommendation. So we do have rules of decorum. When you're testifying, please speak only to me, not to anyone else on the line. Please don't interrupt one another. If I ask you a question, please wait till I finish before you answer. Please be respectful to the person speaking. At the end of the proceedings, I'll issue a written ruling within 15 days. The decision will be mailed to you. Please contact Ms. Polk, the hearing coordinator, to update your mailing address if it's recently changed. Uh, it, Mr. Green, Officer Huerta will serve you with the decision. Uh, so it's important to keep in contact with him. Okay, Officer Huerta, you may proceed. Thank you, Hearing Officer Kaywood. So on January 16th, 2022, Mr. Green entered the main library with his pit bull, Dorje. Mr. Green identified Dorje as a service animal and was allowed entrance into the library. Mr. Green and Dorje were situated on the third floor near, com near computer 315. Mrs. Sherbin, the librarian, uh, 
conducted a normal security sweep and observed a white male later identified as Mr. Green slumped over at computer 315. Ms. Sherman proceeded to knock on the table where Mr. Green was located. Suddenly, Dorje appeared from under the table. Dorje was growling and barking. Ms. Sherman retreated and called library security for assistance. Ms. Sherman observed Dorje wearing a leash loosely wrapped around the chair leg that Mr. Green was sitting on. Ms. Sherman did not see Dorje's leash in Mr. Green's hand. Moments later, library security officers Messina and Roberson arrived on scene. Officer Messina stated that Mr. Green was sleeping and Dorje was not under control. Officer Joshua arrived a few minutes later and subsequently approached Mr. Green in order to conduct a well-being check. Dorje proceeded to run towards Mr. Joshua, bite Mr. Joshua's left arm, and not let go. Officer Robertson pepper sprayed Dorje with negative results and subsequently struck Dorje with a hammer until Dorje released the bite. This is the second time Dorje has been the subject of a vicious and dangerous dog hearing. Uh, thank you, Officer Huerta. Uh, before you call your first witnesses, the witness, please let me uh, identify for the record the documents in my case file. Exhibit number one is the San Francisco Police Department's complaint submitted uh, submitted on January 19th, 2022, with three photographs dated January 24th, 2022. Exhibit number two is the SFPD 50-day time waiver form. Officer Huerta, this is signed by you. Uh, did you have a conversation with Mr. Green and did he agree to waive the 10-day the waiting period for the hearing? Yes, hearing officer Kaywood. Thank you. Ex exhibit number three is a set of records from the San Francisco Sheriff's Department. I'm not gonna identify them all individually, but I have a number of witness statements. Incident report number 2200349484. I have a supplemental incident report. Um, I have a video that was booked into evidence. Uh, it looks like a cell phone video, as well as uh, four photographs of Mr. Joshua's injuries and a number of other records. Uh, exhibit number four is a video, video of the incident from Reddit. Exhibit number five is a set of records from the Department of Animal Care and Control. Exhibit number six is a vicious and dangerous dog statement of decision dated February 4th, 2019, as well as the related case file, which I reviewed that uh, SFPD incident report number 19003295. Exhibit number seven is a notice of hearing to Brendan Green, G-R-E-E-N-E, -E -E, dated January 27th, 2022, together with the uh, the police department and sheriff's department's case file, health code sections 42 to 42.5 and proof of personal service. Exhibit number eight is a notice of hearing to Fidel Joshua, dated January 27th, 2022. Exhibit number nine is a notice of hearing to Adarel Roberson, A-D-A-R-E-L-L-R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N, dated January 27th, 2022. Exhibit number 10 is a notice of hearing to Rita Messina. Exhibit number 11 is a notice of hearing to Doreen Horston, H-O-R-S-T-I-N. Exhibit number 12 is a notice of hearing to Shauna Sherman, S-H-E-R-M-A-N. Exhibit number 13 is a notice of hearing to Anthony Ochoa, O-C-H-O-A. Exhibit number 14 is a notice of hearing to Stephanie uh, Pone, P-O-N-E. Exhibit number 15 is a notice of hearing to Harry Wu, W-U. Uh, exhibit number 16 is an email from Aaron Hewitt, H-E-W-I-T-T, -T, um, which was added to the case file belatedly. Exhibit number 16 is a proof of service for the Hewitt statement and the SF Sheriff's Department video. Uh, service on green and it was personal service. Okay, Officer Huerta, please call your first witness. Thank you, Hearing Officer K. What I want to call Mr. Fidel Joshua. Hello, sir. Please uh, state your name and spell it for the record. Fidel Joshua, F-I-D-E-L. Last name is J-O-S-H-U-A. 
it, and we're here regarding an incident that reportedly occurred on January 16th at the main library uh, of this year. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And uh, before you tell me what happened, can you just tell me how you're employed? I'm employed with the city and county of San Francisco uh, at the public library. Okay. Are you a security guard or how, how do you, yep. what job do you yeah, have? Considered, uh, uh, building and grounds patrol officer. Got it. Okay. Uh, now I want you to tell me what happened step by step and um, take it slow so we don't miss any details. Okay. Um, that day I was working in dispatch in the office. Um, we had, uh, that was noticeable dog barking uh, coming from the third floor. Um, two off, well, I recalled uh, Officer. Uh, uh, Robinson, Robinson responded to the call. Um, as he was going up, he grabbed the hammer because he, he he said, it's, you know, it's a dog. <laughs> so um, as he left, um, a few minutes later, he called back and said, you know, I've been trying to reach um, the sheriff. He said, can you call him on dispatch? So I called him on dispatch and told him uh, to respond to the third floor. We had a dog uh, uh, that was barking that was out of control. Um, so when it happened, uh, gave it a few more minutes, sheriff didn't, miss, didn't arrive. I get another call from, I think it was Doreen uh, from the third floor. She stated that um, this patron is unresponsive. Uh, so at that time I felt like um, the patron probably needed Narcan. And so um, uh, I know- by pa uh, by, Did you know, I'm did sorry? you connect the, did you connect the patron to the dog at that point? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you so, you understood that you understood that the patron was the dog owner. Is that right? Well, okay. Let me by assumption because the dog was barking, I just assumed that the patron was unresponsive because he needed Narcan, and the dog was barking to alert. So I grabbed the Narcan to go upstairs in the event that he actually needed Narcan, and uh, I saw as I get off the elevator. I look to the right uh, near uh, computer 315, and I see uh, the patron face down on the keyboard with both hands on the desk, and the dog was the dog was continuing to bark. I also noticed that the strap I saw the strap the dog was uh, was uh, attached to the chair. Sometimes I will put the the loop of the uh, the leash under the chair to you know to make to make sure the dog is uh, secured. And so I walked up to verify, and that's when the dog came from under the table and attacked me. Can you describe your what? approach? Hi, can you describe your approach to the Well, I just walked up. I, I, I walked up carefully, and I was observing. I was really trying to, I was looking at the leash more than a dog to make sure that the dog was attached to the leash, I mean, to the chair. And, um, as I got close, I realized that he wasn't. That's when the dog attacked. Did you? Did you? Uh, these are just answers to questions that I I have to ask so that I can make a decision under the health code. Did you uh, do anything to provoke or tease the dog in any way? No. Okay, and at what speed did you approach uh, the patron who was unresponsive? Uh, it, it, it was a, a, a careful, moderate uh, pace uh, approach. I wasn't. Uh, it wasn't like a rush or anything like that. I was carefully approaching. Okay, and were your? Do you recall where your arms arms were? Were they straight down to your sides or up, or if you know? Um, I don't recall, but I would think that they would be, you know, to my sides. I had no reason for them to be up. Okay. And have you seen the video uh, that I discussed in Exhibit 4 that was ultimately uploaded into Reddit? I see, yeah, I know there's two different videos I've seen. There's one I've seen very frequently, and uh, there's another one that I think is more detailed. I haven't seen that one uh, well at once. Okay, as far as the one, as far as the one uh, that was, that that was uh, uploaded from Reddit. Did you identify yourself on that on that video? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. 
And have you seen this uh, patron before the state? Uh, negative, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Not that I can recall. I don't yeah. And, and, I, and I know that these incidents can be very traumatic, but could you uh, describe the attack for me? Um, as the dog became, uh, began to get closer to me, I realized that he wasn't on a leash and he kept coming and he was jumping towards me and I proceeded to protect myself. I started to swing, you know, uh, trying to keep the dog away from me. Uh, the dog bit my right hand first and then he grabbed, as I turned, he grabbed my left wrist and um, I proceeded to try to get the dog off me by uh, hitting him with punches with my right hand, and um, the dog yanked me down to the ground. And um, as I fell, I continued to, you know, throw punches to try to get him off me. At that time, I see um, Officer Robeson come over, and he was, you know, hitting the dog with, uh, it was like a pin hammer, and the hammer, I saw the hammer when it broke. I think he hit him like two or three times before the hammer broke. And um, I remember putting my right thumb in the dog's right eye, and I don't know how the dog. I don't know. I don't know what happened when the dog was released. I don't. I don't recall how he was released. I don't know if that's what released him or somebody came over and released him. I have no idea. But um, after that, I uh, I realized I couldn't move. You know, my my right leg. I couldn't. I couldn't move my right leg, and there was blood on my uh, right hand and my uh, left. Head there. Okay. Can you? Uh, did you require emergency medical treatment? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Tell me about your injuries and the treatment that you received. I, I did review the photographs, but I would like to hear it directly from you what you experienced. Yeah, I was a puncture wound on my right hand, both sides. Uh, I have a torn. My rotator cuff is completely torn. I have injuries on my right shoulder, and I have also tears on my right shoulder. My right, my right quadricep muscles are completely detached. I have a torn meniscus. I'm actually in the hospital right now. I had surgery yesterday. Um, and I have um, uh, a fracture, uh, well, considered a press, but um, the dog uh, locked on my left wrist. Uh, there's puncture wounds in my hand and I have uh, on my wrist, and I have nerve damage to my hand. Uh, the left two fingers on the right, on the left hand side, all the way down the left hand of my uh, left hand. Did you say you have the broken bones as a result of this? Well, I have a, I've had punctured, uh, you know, oh, bone, God. teeth punctured. Yes. Okay. I don't know if you, you can call that a fracture. Did, did you, uh, I did see the photos and I understand your wounds required suturing. Is that right? They require what now? Uh, stitches? Yes, yeah, I require <laughs> stitches on, uh, I, I don't, I didn't ask for a number, but this, uh, on my left uh, wrist, they didn't okay. do anything on my uh, right hand. They said they would prefer, because of the location of it, for it to stay dry and uh, dry out, as opposed to giving the stitches, where it can cause an Thank infection. You. Thank you, sir. All and right. um, one more question. What outcome are you looking for as a result of the screen? Um, to be honest with you, um, we deal with a lot of patrons like that that are irresponsible, that have dogs, that have drug issues. And my personal opinion is that I think they use these dogs for protection because they're homeless. And, um, you know, they bring them into the facility and they're a danger to others. So whatever um, is deemed fair for, from, from a law perspective, uh, I'll embrace that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time and testimony, and I appreciate you being here with us today. Uh, I know that you're in the hospital. Uh, I'll circle back to you later in the hearing if you can stay with us. Thank you. Officer Huerta, please call your next witness. Thank you, Hearing Officer Kay. What I want to call Mr. Uh, Roberson. Hello, sir. Could you please state your name and spell it for the record? I want to make sure I pronounce it correctly as well. Oh, 
Okay. Well, my name is Adario. My name is Adario okay. Roberson. That's Adario. That's A D A I R E L L. Last name Roberson. That's R O B as in boy E R S O N. Thank you, Mr. Roberson. And and how are you employed? I am a building and grounds patrol officer at the San Francisco, uh, for the city and county of San Francisco at the library. Great. And uh, I had Ms. Polk send you exhibit number four, the video of the incident from Reddit. Did you identify yourself in that video? Yes, that's, that, uh, I'm the one that's uh, um, pepper spraying the dog. Okay, thank you. Please tell me what happened. And as I uh, said to Mr. Joshua, please uh, take the time and make sure that you give me uh, all the details. Sure. Okay. Um, so it was a Sunday night. Uh, my, myself and uh, another officer, uh, Rita Messina, we uh, were walking. We were scheduled to uh, start a start the closing procedure on the floors. And so in in the in the room of going upstairs to you know to get ready for closing, um, got a call via dispatch uh, that we have a dog barking aggressively on the third floor. Um, I heard the barks prior to or prior to dispatch saying something because I thought it was just from outside because where our office is located at is pretty close to the to the street. Um, so at that time when I heard the call, there was no one left to dispatch. Uh, to, go, to go to the call other than Rita and myself. And um, at the time, I spoke with, I on the radio, uh, via two-way radio, because we have the sheriff deputy there, and I remember trying to reach out to him multiple times, like, yo, um, can we get someone to come up here to run this call with us? We need, you know, because they have the tools and the training to actually deal with such a, a, a situation as far as aggressive animals. And uh, so I remember I was reaching out to him, and no one never answered the radio. And then that's when I got a call from uh, Officer Anthony Ochoa saying that the chef is gone. So at that, and so in order, to, so in order to go to the call, I remember just in the office. I went to the office. Like, okay, I grabbed a hammer because you know for protection, because we don't have no clubs or anything. We just have pepper spray. So I said I'm gonna go ahead and grab something just in case if this situation get out of hand. And um, so as soon as Rita and I go up to the third floor, we to the right, we know it's to the right. Um, a gentleman um, at computer 315 face down on the keyboard. So at this time, he's reading I. So the dog is barking very aggressively, very aggressively, and it's like um, barking at anyone that's in the in the area. And so Rita and I kind of tried to make a perimeter, you know, around the area, to so people, like other patrons, wouldn't walk in the area towards the animal because the animal was going back and forth. It was going back and forth on either on both sides, and it, I, I didn't see a leash at all. I, I saw like a blue, I saw a blue, a blue rope, and um, the way the dog was going back and forth, I didn't get close enough to know if it was um, attached to the chair or whatever. And so at that time, I dispatched back to uh, I, I radioed back to dispatch and say, "Hey, yo, um, the sheriff's not here, so can we we call them on their uh, non-emergency mobile?" And they said they would send someone over. And at that time, I got a call from uh, after we did that. Uh, dispatch reported that they were they were going to send someone over. So at that time, I got a call via two-way radio from Fidel, and Fidel was asking me, Officer Fidel Joshua was asking me, "Hey, yo, is the guy possibly? He says a service animal, possibly. He was like, there's a service animal. He said, is the gentleman possibly OD, which is overdose? Do he possibly have Narcan? And the way, from my experience with patrons that's looking the way that he looked, he was possibly OD. I said, he's possibly OD. But um, given the fact that the dog was so aggressive, um, I didn't make any attempts. So the reason I didn't make any attempts to do anything, we were just waiting for the sheriffs. Um, at that time, Fidel came up to the to the uh, third floor as well to the assist, and he was like, yo, is the guy OD? And at that time, I was like, yeah, he is. But the dog, I said, I'm not going to go over and deal with it because of the dog. So Fidel... When he walked off, he, we, and Rita and I made multiple attempts of trying to wake the guy up by screaming his name and whatnot. And there was even some other people that were, hey, yo, just wake up, wake up, buddy. And he, the guy never budged. He never woke up or anything. 
him, I was kind of shocked at the dog. Like, he didn't wake up from hearing the dog barking. So I stayed back, made sure that uh, Rita and I were safe, and I made sure that I was safe. And uh, when Fidel came up, on the other side, to his side, and he was walking over to take a look. And I was like, just, I was like, just be, be careful. Mr. And that's when the dog went Mr. underneath the table. Mr. Roberson, you cut out for a second. Can you yeah. uh, just oh. proceed? A, uh, can you just oh. go a little bit slower and start start the last uh, few sentences over again? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so that's okay. When Fidel came up to the Fidel came up, and uh, he said, "Is the gentleman OD? Possibly. Maybe the dog is trying to alert us that the guy is OD." So Fidel walked over to my left, and I said, okay, Fidel, be careful because I don't see a leash. As soon as I was saying that, Fidel's hands was to his side. And as soon as I said, be careful, that's when, when he walked over to take a look over the um, table to see if he see anything. That's when the dog jumped up, uh, jumped, went underneath the table and jumped up and went after him. When you say went and after him. that's when him, Fidel what backed is- up. When you let the me stop you for a second. Tip. When, when well, you say the dog went after him, could you be more specific in your description? Oh yeah, that's when the dog went underneath the table. The dog went underneath the table and jumped up towards Fidel's neck, and that's when Fidel mm-hmm. um, started to defend himself by hitting the dog first. And as soon as he started hitting the dog, that's when I deployed uh, my OC spray. And um, as they were, you know, as you can see with the video, as they can go go around, I'm, I'm trying to spray the dog and it had zero effect. And that's when I went in my uh, pocket and grabbed the hammer and started to uh, started to uh, hit the dog. And then I broke the hammer over the the dog's head. Do, do you know at what point Mr. Green awoke, if any, if he awoke at all? No. I I I uh, during that entire time um, looking at the video um, I didn't know until after everything has calmed down after the, after everything has stopped but looking at the video his head was still down the entire time that we were like you know in the situation with the with the animal. Okay, and how, about how far away was uh, the, the patron or the owner from you when the attack was happening? Was it three feet, five feet, 20 uh, feet? Maybe, I would say maybe 10 to 12 feet. It, it it wasn't far. It wasn't that far. 10 to 12 feet. And did you see whether or not the dog actually pulled Mr. Joshua to the ground or if Mr. Joshua fell to the ground? Yes. It, with the dog, when, when, he, um, when he turned the first time, then that's when the dog caught onto his left arm. And then that's how Mr. Uh, Mr. Joshua got, uh, fell to the ground. Well, the, pretty much the dog dragged him to the ground. Okay. And when Mr. Fidel approached the dog, did he, did Mr. Actually, Mr. Joshua do anything other than simply walk forward? That's all he did. Yeah, he just he just walked forward. He walked forward very slowly because he was concerned if the guy had um if the owner had OD'd. So it was very slowly, his hands was to his side, and he was kind of like looking over, but it wasn't like as if he was trying to approach him, because that's why he was at the opposite side of the table. Okay. Mr. Roberson, do you know how the attack ended? What caused the dog to stop? All, all I remember all I remember is I remember hitting the dog over there with the hammer, and um, the hammer broke. And um, the dog still had a... Had a in, Fidel had his hand on the dog's face, and when the hammer broke, I turned around to grab the the sharp part of the uh, of the hammer of the the stake, and I was going to try to stab the dog at that point because he wouldn't let go. For some reason, like the dog seemed kind of like at, when I went back, to the dog seemed kind of dazed or something, and then that's when the dog just just stopped and he went back over, and then that's when I noticed that um, the owner of the animal was up at that time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, anything else? Um, no, that's, that's it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Officer Huerta, please call your next witness.
Thank you, Hearing Officer Kay. What I want to call Miss uh, Messina. Hello, please Hi. Uh, state your Hi, please state your name and spell it for the record. Officer Huerta, when you announce the witnesses, please use their first and last name. Thanks. Uh, Ma'am, could you please state your name and spell it for the record? Rita Messina. Rita, R I T A. Messina, M A S I. And it's a Nancy A. And uh, Ms. Messina, how are you employed? I am a building and grounds patrol officer at the library for the city and county of San Francisco. Thank you. And were you a witness to all or part of the uh, incident that happened on uh, January 16th, 2022? Yes. Okay, tell me what you saw. So it was towards closing time. We were posted at the book gate, which is near the entrance. Um, I remember hearing a dog bark, but as Mr. Robertson said, I didn't, we don't know where the bark came from, but a few seconds later, there was a call to our dispatch. Then I seen Robertson, Officer Robertson, going to go upstairs. And so I said, okay, I'm going to go with you. At that time, we went up there not knowing exactly what to expect. All we know is that there's an aggressive dog barking. So we get up to the third floor, we get off the elevators. You can, we started walking, because right when you get off the elevators, there's a table to the right, and that's where the patron was laying down on the table. So we walk towards the table and, you know, asking, our normal protocol is, you know, are you okay? Uh, and so as soon as we got a little closer to the table, you see the dog growling, barking. Uh, the patron was like on the table with his face down on the keyboard, hands out on the table. <clears throat> no response from him. Dog is barking, growling. I noticed I don't know about a leash. There was something on him, but I know that I didn't see the owner holding it. I didn't see anything holding him. And the dog was like pacing back and forth. So at that time, me and Robertson both stepped to the side. I seen him making calls on his radio. Uh, so we were just waiting there for the sheriffs to come. A few moments later, Officer Fidel Joshua gets off the elevator, starts walking towards the table. Um, him and, as Robertson described, you know, he asked if the patron was Odin. Uh, when he started to walk towards the table, because the, the patron's back is facing a wall, kind of. And so the front of the table is where Joshua Fidel was approaching. He wasn't even completely in front of the table. And all I remember is the dog going underneath the table, jumping up at him, and then so, pulling him down to the ground. Stop, let me stop you right there. Mm -hmm. How close did Mr. Joshua get to the table before the dog went under the table and lunged up at him? I want to say five feet or more because he wasn't even in front of the pit like in front of the table right next to it he was standing back from it closer to where officer officer roberson was standing okay, okay so then you so saw the dog he, lunge, lunge yeah up. the dog just lunged and so previous to the dog lunging as me and officer roberson were standing there there had been patrons that had been walking directly in front of the table to leave uh and as officer roberson said a few of them were yelling at the patron to wake up and the dog didn't do anything the dog was barking aggressively but not attacking anybody at that point uh and so there was also a few children that had just been there and we advised the mom to please you know take the children to the side so then Officer Fidel Joshua comes up, dog attacks him, and then 
all I remember is running from where I was standing. Uh, I see Officer Roberson trying to hit the dog, hitting the dog. The dog is not responding. Um, hold on, let me back up. I'm sorry. He pepper sprayed the dog first. I've never been around pepper spray. So all I know is he's spraying the pepper spray and I see it going on the dog, going on uh, Officer Fidel Joshua. Uh, some of it was coming up, but the dog was not responsive at all to it. That's when Officer Roberson was hitting the dog. Uh, the dog seemed to be shaking while he was biting and jumping while he was biting. Um, the hits were not affecting the dog. And then all I recall is the hammer hitting him one time when it breaks. And that's when I just noticed the dog let go. And as Officer Roberson said, the dog was kind of unresponsive, like just like dazed. And then the dog ran over to its owner. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your, I appreciate your time and testimony here today. Uh, officer Huerta, please call your next witness. Thank you, hearing officer. Okay, what I wanna call Ms. Shauna Sherman. Hello, please uh, state your name and spell it for the record. Hi, my name is Shauna Sherman, S-H-A-W-N-A-S-H-E-R-M-A-N. And Ms. Sherman, how are you employed? I'm employed as the, uh, with the city and county of San Francisco as a librarian on the third floor, general reference desk side. Thank you. And I understand you were a witness to uh, the incident that happened on January 16th, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and tell me what you what you saw. I, I'm just interested in your own personal observations, what you saw and heard, rather than what others told you. Okay, thank you. I uh, mm -hmm. I work on the reference desk. It was, um, you know, I think about 30 minutes before closing. Um, I was working on the left side of the reference desk. There's two computers and. Um, we usually do a walk around to, you know, to see what, how everything's going on the floor, you know, uh, make sure that, you know, everybody has got their masks on and that people aren't sleeping um, because we want to make sure that if people are sleeping, you know, that they're not ODing. We've gone through all the Narcan training and all that. Um, I noticed uh, when I started my walk around, I noticed a patron on computer 315 with his head on the keyboard and his hands on the keyboard. Um, I approached and knocked on the desk, which is what I usually do to wake patrons up, and immediately a pit bull came from under the desk and barked aggressively at me. Um, it was so aggressive that I, I felt like I couldn't engage any further with the patron, went back to the reference desk and called security um, because I sort of feared that the dog um, was... Um, wasn't safe or whatever, I don't know. I was scared for myself. I'm afraid of dogs. I don't like dogs and he barked pretty bad. Um, once the security officers came up, um, uh, Ms. Rita, I'm sorry, and uh, AD, Mr. AD, they, they were standing um, off to the side from the patron. Um, the, once you get off the elevators on the third floor, if you take a right, um, that desk where the patron was is the first desk that you're gonna see um, after a self-checkout the machine and they were both standing away from the patron there as the dog continued to bark and the patron was still uh, slumped over on the desk. Um, I did notice that the dog was pacing back and forth um, behind the patron or on the side of the patron. I saw the leash on the floor. Um, I don't, the, it was definitely not in the patron's hands and you know, I don't know how, how supported it was. I, Thought I saw it wrapped around the chair, but there's no telling, and it's obvious that it wasn't wrapped around the chair so as to prevent the dog from moving, and it was definitely not in the patron's hand. Um, you know, this this happened for a while, like um, I don't know how many minutes passed between um, when the dog was barking and um, Mr. Joshua came up. 
Um, it was a while the dog was barking loud and aggressively and as I mentioned, pacing. Um, but the next thing I knew is that Mr. Mr. Joshua was in front of the desk where the patron was and I noticed the dog coming out from under the desk and attacking um, our security um, officer. Uh, the, um, the dog jumped up and grabbed, I don't know exactly where, but I know that the, it took several tries to try to get the dog off of our security officer. And um, it was a very frightening experience because that dog just, I, I noticed how the dog grabbed him, knocked him down and moved him around so that it eventually, they ended up in front of the reference desk. And I noticed, you know, our two officers trying to do the best they could to help our fel their fellow officer get the dog off of Mr. Joshua. Um, I noticed that I can't remember exactly. I remember them spraying the pepper spray. I remember hitting them, the dog several times until the um, hammer broke um, and then the dog retreated. Between this time, I did notice that there was a patron on the computer um, a little further down uh, from the desk where the, pa the unresponsive patron was who sort of like leaned over and was yelling at the patron, get up, man, your dog is doing so, you know, get up, man, your dog is biting somebody or whatever. And that's when I think the patron finally did wake up. Um, was that during, was that during the attack? Yeah, that was or, during the attack. Because okay. I, I, yeah, the, the patron sort of like, you know, I could see, he was sort of creeping over there to yell at the guy and then sort of creeped back. Can, can you estimate for me how long the attack lasted i know sometimes time stands still when we're under stress so if you can't that's okay but do you have a sense of how long it went on um i don't i don't have an exact sense but um i know that you know mr joshua has moved around several times you know I don't, that could have been a minute i i really don't have a sense of the time but i just remember him trying to get rid of uh, get the dog off of him and and you know both security officers trying as well and you know him being moved a couple different ways a couple different times. Can can you describe Mr. Joshua's approach toward uh, the unresponsive patron that precipitated that led up to the attack? Um, I'm at the reference desk um, and there's a pillar between where the where the desk is and where I am. Um, I noticed that Mr. Fidel was um, coming around the desk um, to the front, um, but I, all I basically saw was when the dog came at him. I don't, I don't remember seeing how he um, came toward him, but um, yeah, I don't remember exactly. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate, uh, let me just check my notes to make sure I don't have anything additional for you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate your time and testimony here today. Officer Huerta, please call your next witness. Thank you, Hearing Officer Kay. What I want to call Ms. Doreen Horston. Hello, please state your name and spell it for the record. Hi, this is Doreen Horston, D-O-R-E-E-N-H-O-R-S-T-I-N. -E -E Hello, uh, and how are you employed? I'm a librarian with the San Francisco Public Library. Okay, and I understand you were a witness to the dog attack that happened on January 16th, is that right? Yes. Okay, tell me what you saw and heard. Okay, well, I was working on the fourth floor, and we heard barking, and it was going on for a long time. We do occasionally hear barking because people bring dogs inside, and it will go on you know, a couple of barks and then it'll be quiet. But this went on and on. And on the fourth floor, there are these cutouts in the floor where you can see directly below to the third floor. And so it's like these cutouts with the railing around them. So I walked over to the where the noise was coming from because I didn't know at that point that it was from the third floor. So I was walking towards the noise trying to see where it was. And when I looked through this cutout, I was directly above the dog and the dog's owner. I was directly above the bank of computers that includes computer 315, where the dog owner was. And I could see the dog. He was barking. 
and he had a collar and a leash. It was kind of loose, but the leash was just laying on the floor. It wasn't tied to anything. The dog was barking, and then the owner, Brandon Green, um, he had his face on the computer keyboard. He was completely unresponsive. I, I was kind of wondering if he was dead, actually, because it was so loud and he wasn't responding. And um, I guess fortunately for him, he wasn't. But, um, but there was a lot of noise at that point, and it was kind of shocking to me that, that the owner wasn't waking up. And um, I could see two of the guards, um, A.D. and Fidel, and they were uh, doing something that we've been trained to do, which is when you're dealing with somebody, a person or an animal that's aggressive, you keep some furniture between you and the aggressor. So one of the guards was standing behind the self-check machine that was at the end of the table where all these computers are. And Fidel was on the opposite side of the table from the dog and the owner. So he had the table between him and the dog, and he was a few feet back from the table. And I was directly above looking down at the, the owner and the dog. So I know that they were trying to rouse the owner. I mean, it was clear what was going on at this point. And... Um, I could see that the dog was aggressive, and then just all of a sudden, like the hair went up on the back of the dog, and he rushed under the table and rushed out at Fidel and bit him. And I saw Fidel get pulled to the ground by the dog. And then what ensued, it kind of was out a little bit outside my field of vision. I could hear all this barking and shouting and screaming from the dog. The owner was still unconscious. And then another patron came from the right, the right-hand side. He ran over, and from where I was standing, it looked like he grabbed Mr. Green by the shoulders and shook him and said something like, hey, man, your dog, wake up. And at that point, I think the patron regained consciousness. And then, actually, I had to step away for a few minutes to help someone. And then I came back to see what was happening, and at that point, um, Mr. Green had control of the dog. The dog had blood on its muzzle. He, had, he was not wearing a leash or a collar. And he was awake, and he was yelling at our guards, telling them that it was their fault. And then at that point, um, the sheriff came, and a woman from animal control showed up. I'm sorry, everyone. It looks like uh, hearing officer Kaywood was disconnected. So let me try reaching her again. Oh, hearing officer Kaywood. Hi. Uh, good okay. afternoon. I got dis I got disconnected. Uh, if you could continue your testimony at the point where you saw the dog had blood on his mouth. Okay. Yeah. So so like I said, I had to step away to help someone, and when I came back and watched, um, then the owner was awake. He was holding the dog. The dog had blood on his muzzle, and he was not wearing a leash or a collar. So I don't know what happened if he was he was able to shrug it off or it came off in the struggle. I don't know. But but he, the dog owner was holding the dog, and then he was yelling at our guards, telling them that they were that it was their fault that the dog attacked them because they were being aggressive, which is not what I observed. And then um, the sheriff came, and then a woman came from animal control. And took custody of the dog, is that correct? Well, uh, sort of. I mean, Mr. Green didn't want the, the woman from animal control to use her. Um, she had one of those poles with the loop at the end. I don't know what they're called. It's called a catch pole. A catch pole. So he didn't want her to use that, and he said something really interesting. He said, don't use those. They've used those on my dog before, and he doesn't like it, and he'll freak out or something like that. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting that he's had this experience before. But, you know, uh, then 
so she didn't use that. And so she spoke to the dog owner in a calm voice and she tossed him a leash and asked him to put the leash on the dog himself. Okay. And then so the dog was taken into custody at that point. Yeah, I think I'm not totally sure. I think actually that that the owner walked the dog downstairs with the person from animal control. Okay. Can you describe the dog for me? It's a gray and white pit bull style breed. Um a little on the small side for a pit bull. I would say like fifty or sixty pounds, I don't know. Um and have you seen this patron before? No, I've never Mr. seen Green? him before. I've never seen him before. Okay. Thank you for your time and testimony. I appreciate it. Officer Huerta, please call your next witness. Thank you, Hearing Officer K. Would I want to call Mr. Harry Wu? Yes. Hello, sir. Please please state your name and spell it for the record. Yeah, this is a uh, Deputy Wu, last uh W U first of Harry, H A R R Y. Uh Wu is W U. Okay, and you're with the San Francisco Sheriff's Department, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and uh tell me what you know about this incident. Uh so regarding this incident that occurred, um I had uh, left the facility at uh seventeen hundred hours. Um usually I was made aware that the library was closing at 1800 hour that day, um, but I had a report approved. Usually there's our two deputies assigned to that post at the library, and I was the sole deputy there that day only by myself. So I had a pending report that needed to be approved by a supervisor. So I told Rita uh, or Messina, Officer Messina at the book gate at that time, inform her that I'll be departing uh, from the book gate to City Hall to get a report approved by our supervisor before uh, 1800 hours, which is the closing of the library. Um, so I, I, at City Hall, the report got approved by 1700 hours, by 1730 hours, and our supervisor at that time, Senior Deputy Davidson, informed me that um, I, I was uh, able to leave and that they would monitor the two-way radio uh, regarding their dispatch and the officers' uh, radios that they carry to dispatch us to any calls that they need us uh, on. So I provided them the radio and the, and the supervisor stated that they would monitor that radio. And if any assistance needed, they would respond out to City Hall, I mean, to the, the main library. So uh, at around 18.05 hours, uh, I received a call from uh, on my personal cell phone. I was already dressed out of uniform. Uh, but I was still in San Francisco. I um, was called by our supervisor, Senior Deputy Davidson, uh, regarding a dog bite that occurred at the main library, and uh, I was made informed of the situation. So I responded back to the library or to City Hall to get dressed and responded back to the the uniform, uh, get back uh, dressed into uniform and took a patrol car out to the main library. Uh, so at the scene, what I observed, uh, they had a detained subject at that time. Uh, multiple deputies were responding to were already on scene. Um, they had a detained subject at the time who we identified as Green, uh, Brendan. And then uh, who was also there was uh, Animal Care Control, uh, Pone, Officer Pone. So she was, she was ready to leave the scene, but I briefly made contact with her and attempted to uh, determine what had occurred and her thoughts on the situation, uh, if there was any history related to the dog that had, uh, I guess, attacked uh, Officer Joshua. Uh, she described me some information. She stated she couldn't confirm any history regarding the dog that they had uh, in the truck, in the back truck that was already, that was still barking at that time. Uh, so I couldn't determine uh, whether the dog had previous history, but they were telling me they were going to transport the dog to animal care control to have it uh, quarantined for 10 days. Uh, at the time, Fidel, I believe, was uh, already transported to, I, I couldn't make contact with Fidel, who was already transported from that uh, area to the hospital to get uh, further medical treatment. 
So I responded upstairs where Deputy Aquino was, who was uh, talking to the witnesses that were still on scene, which was uh, the librarians, it was Avalos and Sherman. Uh, uh, Messina was, was also there, Rita, and uh, Roberson was also there. So I didn't want to re-traumatize, uh, you know, having them be telling me the stories that had occurred. Um, but I sp spoke, lead, I briefly spoke with them and uh, Deputy Aquino informed me that they were writing statements uh, regarding the incident. And so therefore I took those uh, statements and I generated a report regarding the incident. Okay. I'm particularly interested in any statements uh, that Mr. Green may have made at the scene. Right, right. Um, yes. Yeah, so after get, receiving the statements, I uh, went back downstairs and uh, I made contact with uh, Green, who I Mirandized at that time, uh, to just in case any statements he may give me uh, may be incriminating. Um, so I, you know, I attempted to ask, I talked to him, I Mirandized him, I attempted to ask him um, if he was made aware of the situation of, of the dog bite. He was, he's, uh, I recall him saying no, he was asleep at the time. I, I tried, I asked if he had history regarding the dog having previous dog bites. He, he refused. He, did, he didn't want to answer those questions, but uh, Green did state that the animal was a service dog and that it was for his PTSD. Uh, Green okay. didn't want to talk further, so I therefore I ended my uh, Miranda questioning. Okay, and I just, I just want to confirm what you wrote in your report that quote Green stated he did not observe his pit bull bite anyone because he was sleeping. End quote. Is that correct? Yes. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. He said. He, Okay, thank you, Deputy Wu. I appreciate your time and testimony here today. Officer Hosa, please call your next witness. Thank you, Hearing Officer K. What I want to call Ms. Stephanie Pone. Hi, uh, please state your name and spell it for the record. My name is Stephanie Pone. Stephanie is common spelling. Pone, P is in Paul, O, N is in Nancy, E is in Edward. Pone. Okay, great. And how are you employed? I am an animal control officer with the city and county of San Francisco Animal Care and Control. Thank you. And did you respond to the main library on January 16th regarding this uh, dog bite incident that we've been discussing? I did. Okay. Tell me what you saw or heard. Um, the incident was over by the time I arrived. Um, I believe that I arrived, went up the elevator at the same time with um, the EMTs that responded. So um, they were offering medical care to the victim while I was uh, trying to get an understanding of what was going on and uh, then began speaking with the dog owner, Mr. Green. Um, he was upset uh, but cooperative with me. Um, he did, as the previous witness stated, he did have some concern about the catch pole and since he was cooperative with me and we were surrounded by uh, sheriff's department officers, I felt comfortable letting him take the dog down to the van, which is something that we frequently do um, for safety reasons. If an owner is cooperative, we allow them to leash the dog and take the dog with us to the van. He helped me get the dog into the van um, and he was not really able to tell me much of what happened since he was sleeping at the time. Did, did he tell did he tell you he was asleep during the incident? He did. He wanted it, me to know that he was not um, under the influence. He was sleeping. He, you know, because he was sleeping during the incident, I don't know how much he knew about what had happened, but he had expressed to me that he was upset that they had treated the dog or that they had been aggressive with him and that the dog was protecting him. Um, and that he was upset that they thought he was overdosing. Um, but, you know, neither myself nor the owner witnessed what actually happened, so. Okay, okay thank you. And uh, can you d describe the dog's behavior for, in your uh, care? Um, at the time, I mean, the dog was, I don't recall the dog doing anything aggressive towards me, but there was a lot going on and it was very loud in the library. And I'm not sure that, you know, I, I felt safe because the owner had control of the dog. He was holding onto him pretty tightly um, on 
kind of squatted down next to him holding with his arms around the dog as well as a leash. I also then gave the owner another leash so the dog was kind of double confined. Um, and then when the owner stood up, we walked down three flights of stairs. Um, for safety reasons, I didn't want to ride an elevator with myself and the sheriff's department or the sheriff's officers and the dog. Um, it would have been too close together. So we did walk down three flights of stairs. And I remember the dog walking with the owner. Um, I don't recall there being any issues getting the dog into the van. Um, I didn't see anything notable. Okay. Thank you, uh, Officer Pohn. I appreciate your time and testimony. Mm -hmm. Officer Huerta, please call your next witness. Thank you. Here, Officer K. What I want to call Mr. Brendan Green. Hello, sir. Uh, could you please uh, state your name and spell it for the record? Yes, ma'am. It's Brendan B R E N D A N. Last name. I'm sorry, Miss Kaywood. N E. Yes. Can I interrupt? I'm sorry, I missed one witness. Can we backtrack uh -huh. and call that? Can we backtrack and call that witness? Yes. Hold on, Mr. Green. We'll get to you soon. Uh, who's the next witness? Mr. Anthony Ochoa. Okay, uh, Mr. Ochoa, please uh, state your name and spell it for the record. Hi, my name is Anthony Ochoa. First name Anthony, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y. Last name Ochoa, O-C-H-O-A. And uh, how are you employed? I am a building and buildings and ground patrol officer for the city and county of San Francisco working at the San Francisco Public Library. Okay, thanks, sir. Uh, so I understand you were a witness to the events on January 16th. Uh, is that right? Uh, I was a partial witness to the attack, yes. Okay, tell me what you saw and heard. Um, to start from the beginning, um, to go over everything again, uh, we hear the dog barking. Uh, not even a minute later, we get a phone call in regards to a person not responding to uh, the staff members trying to wake them up. And the dog was barking continuously for, I would say, about 10 minutes or so. And uh, after that time, uh, Officer Roberson already requested for the Sheriff Department uh, via radio. Um, and then Officer Joshua also called their dispatch to get an officer over to help respond to this call. And after Officer Joshua made the phone call, he he asked me, do you think the person is overdosing? That's why the dog is barking. And I said, I wasn't sure. So he took it upon himself to try to head up there with some Narcan to do a welfare check on the patron. Um, and moments after that, I I don't hear the dog barking. All I hear is the growl, and I hear the scuffle between uh, Officer Joshua and the dog. And I look up because from the third floor you can look down, and it's open to the library to the first floor where I was stationed at. And I saw the dog jump up and grab a hold of Officer Joshua's left arm, taking him to the ground. Did and you see? Officer Joshua's approach to uh, the patron. That was office. that was restricted from my vision. Okay, so the first thing you saw, you heard a growl, you looked up, and you saw the dog jump up, bite Mr. Joshua's arm, and take him to the ground. Is that accurate? That is correct. Okay, please continue. Um, as soon as I saw that, I ran up to the third floor to try to help my colleague any way I possibly could have. Um, but by the time I got up there, the the attack was already over with. And I see the owner of the dog kind of laying on top of the dog where uh, computer 315 was. And... So as soon as I kind of gathered what was going on, I asked one of the staff members to call 911 uh, to get somebody there ASAP, um, also with medical to, to come assist Officer Joshua. And Officer Messina then hands me the leash and said, the dog is not on the leash. 
So she hands me the leash, and I get his from a safe distance. I try to tell the owner, can you please put the leash on the dog and control your animal? And at that point, um, he was still yelling kind of incoherently, but I did hear him say that this is your fault. Um, He was protecting me. Um, And I just kept trying to remind him to put the leash and the collar on the dog and to control your animal. And he was loosely holding the dog. Uh, I, I guess, I don't know if, the, the dog was dazed from receiving those uh, hits, but um, at that point, the dog was not at its aggressive state when I when I arrived up there. So at that point, um, I, I I was just trying to help clear the air, the general area because there was still a lot of I, patrons around. I noticed in your written statement, you said that you had to clear the floor. Did you actually have to clear an entire library floor of patrons because of this incident? Uh, Well, it was already close to our closing time. So Mm -hmm. at at that moment, right after the the attack occurred, we were trying to just clear that general area from the patrons before we continued to clear out the rest of the library. Got it. Okay, please continue. Um, by that time, the dog, I just kept an eye on the owner and the dog to make sure, you know, there's nothing else happens. And a few minutes later, SFPD showed up and then the sheriff show up along with animal control, I think moments after that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, anything further? Uh, no, nothing at this moment. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate your time. and testimony here today. Officer Huerta, please call your next hearing participant. Thank you, Hearing Officer K. What I want to call Mr. Brendan Green. Hello, sir. Uh, please uh, state your name and spell it for the record. Yeah, my name is Brendan, B-R-E-N-D-A-N, last name Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. Okay, thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, before we get started, I have just a couple housekeeping matters for you. Uh, I understand that you spoke to Officer Huerta and requested an expedited hearing, which means a a hearing that happens very fast, uh, and that you waived your right to 10 days notice before the hearing. Is that right? That's right. It was a difficult decision, Your Honor, because I would have liked to have had time to get an attorney, but because the hammer was broken on my dog's head, I'm really concerned about his health. And so I just really want to get him to a vet as soon as possible. And while he's in the animal control, I'm not allowed to, you know, to see him or to bring him to a vet. And I don't know what kind of uh, treatment he's gotten. I know that Officer Pone, who spoke earlier, said she's visited him every day and, you know, spent time with him. And, you know, okay. I hope he's alive. Okay. But, I mean, getting a hammer broken on one's head is, is, is I'd imagine, okay. So you, so you did request an expedited hearing, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And you're Dorje's owner, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, before we discuss what happened on January 16th, can you just give me some background information about your dog? How old is Dorje? Dorje's nine and a half. He's been with me okay. since he was one. He's a service dog for PTSD. He's professionally trained. He lives with me on five acres, which is fenced. And he gets along with cats, chickens, dogs, people. Okay, hold on. Let me just get a couple, Couple. Uh, you'll have plenty of time to get, give me more information about your dog. I just want to get some preliminary questions out of the way that I ask everyone. Um, Are you right now? How much does Dorje weigh? Dorje is about 69 pounds. And what breed? He's an American Stafford Shire Terrier, Blue Nose. Okay, has he been neutered? Yes, ma'am. His trainer recommended neutering him when he was two. She said that way he'd be fully grown, but he'd be less aggressive. And, you know, she was an excellent trainer, so I just did everything she said. Okay. 
Great. So what happened on uh, January 16th? Um, so my truck was stolen um, on the 13th. And along with it, my telephone, my wallet, money, cards, clothes, um, you know, my dog's jacket. Uh, I have a, a muzzle for him just so people feel comfortable in public places. Um, you know, pretty much everything was stolen along with the truck. And so I reported the truck stolen and was, you know, hoping it would be quickly recovered. And in the meantime, uh, Georgia and I were just stuck in a very unfamiliar situation where, you know, I had to swallow my pride and borrow some money to get a hotel and hotels are really expensive here. Um, and prior to falling asleep in the library, I had just not had enough money to get an expensive hotel. So we stayed up and just walked around that night. And then I was using the library to use the, uh, the VOIP to call in order to get a money gram to get a hotel while I waited for the PD to hopefully recover my truck. And that's when I fell asleep. It wasn't in any way an overdose. There was no drugs involved. It, it was just exhausting. And it's, I, I'm sure added to Dorje's stress and protectiveness that he was in such an unfamiliar situation. Okay. So would it be fair to say that you didn't see the incident because you were asleep? Yes, ma'am. As soon as I woke up, Dorje came straight to me, and there was there was no problem after that. What was the first thing that did you see, Dorje uh, biting Mr. Joshua when you woke up? No, no, ma'am. He was maintaining as much distance as he could from the security. There was, there was three security guards, like all you know, full size adults, and as you can see in that video, I. The video is very short. I, I, I never received the second video, which you said was longer until yesterday, and it's on a, a CD, which I'm in a hotel. You know, I have no way to view that, so I don't know what that uh, shows. The first video... Hold, 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 hold please, just a second. <laughs> Officer, Officer Huerta, there are two videos in this case. One is the Reddit video, and um, one is the... Uh, Sheriff's Department short video. Uh, I I could tell. I know that those those discs were served on Mr. Green. Did you play those videos for him as well on your whatever handheld device he might have had? Uh, yes, you're not okay. Would I text uh, the video to Mr. Green? And okay, he, did you made, also... he made he made comments did about you... the first video, and then the second video, which is a short video, I gave to him via telephone yesterday and he saw it on my personal cell phone. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Green, go ahead. When when Officer Huerta showed me that video yesterday on his personal cell phone, I, I, I had just been leading the discovery. And as I told him prior to us meeting up, I was really upset seeing a hammer broken on my dog's head. So I really, even though he showed me that video at the time, I didn't, I didn't see what he was showing me. I was actually repeatedly asking him to stop showing me a video that's traumatic of my dog being hit that I, 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 I couldn't process that right at that moment. Okay, uh, Mr. Green, uh, this is, your dog had a prior vicious and dangerous dog hearing uh, almost three years to the day in 2019. Is that correct? Or the, in, the incident yes, happened almost three years. Okay. Um, I, I do have that file and I read it. And in that incident, isn't it true that Dorje bit a man in the head while you were sleeping? Yes, ma'am. I was at a very different point in my life. Um, unlike now where I have a home on five acres, I was just, you know, not in a good place with substance abuse. And I had fallen asleep in an alley, and um, the gentleman that was bitten, I don't know what he was doing at the time, because he didn't show up to court. And uh, 
Well, it looked, it, the hearing officer uh, was sympathetic to your circumstances and the complainant didn't show up to court. And it looks like you dodged a bullet here. Uh, the hearing officer found that uh, your dog didn't meet the vicious and dangerous criteria. She noted that um, you were no longer homeless and that you found a home in Sebastopol. And um, since the in this is what she wrote at the end of her decision, quote, since this incident, Mr. Green is now aware of this behavior and will not put Dorje in a situation like this again. Uh, and then later on in the decision, she wrote, Mr. Green can never leave Dorje unattended in a public place ever again. Uh, so I'm concerned that the, the hearing officer gave you a, a break and was had compassion for the situation where you were in, but the same thing happened. You fell asleep and your dog bit someone rather severely. So um, I'm concerned about releasing this dog to the public. Well, ma'am, if, if I may say, it's a totally different situation because the reason that this happened on the 16th is because I my truck was stolen and you know okay. I I that's even not that's not truck is, even if your that's truck is that. even if your truck is stolen you still have a responsibility to keep your dog on leash and under control in order to protect other community members and it didn't happen. I have another question for you. Um, I can't hear you. Write it down if you're going to talk to me. Yes, ma'am. It, like, it looks like in January of 2020, uh, I'm, lo I'm looking at the record from the Department of Animal Care and Control. Uh, what I'm reading is that Brenda from Grass Valley Shelter called asking for your info. The dog came in as a stray. Um, SFACC gave her all your info, uh, and the the woman from Grass Valley reported that uh, Dorje had blood on him. Do you do you recall that your dog got loose and was picked up as a stray in Grass Valley in 2020? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the, that's actually the exact reason that Dorje was with me this time coming to San Francisco, it's the first time I've brought him uh, since since that prior incident because the dog sitter that I was paying had, had let him get loose and he ended up in the pound. And so this, you know, this time when I was coming, the dog sitter that I had been using, I found out was not actually spending all the time there that he was supposed to and was leaving him for multiple days at a time. And so that's the only reason that I actually brought Dorje with me. Um, you know, I, once he's returned, I won't be bringing him back to San Francisco ever. He'll be staying in the country where he's, you know, fenced in and he's familiar with the space and, you know, he's not in any situation where he feels threatened. I mean, like watching that video, like, is this a hundred percent my bad and my responsibility? And I feel completely terrible that, that, that the gentleman was hurt. And, you know, if I could do something to change that, obviously I would do anything. Um, like, I in no mean, mean in, in no way means to, I in no way mean to take away from my responsibility by by saying just that in the video it looks like the dog feels threatened. There's three full size adults around him. One of them is yelling at full volume, "Get him, get him!" Um, it looks like the one gentleman grabs his leash and pulls it. And that's when it comes off of his head and then starts hitting him. And, and the dog backs off because he's being punched and he's still being punched. And that's when the video first shows him bite, which is, you know, he's, he's, being, he's being attacked. After that, 
the other gentleman unloads the entire can of pepper spray, which, you know, I understand he's not trained for that. And the sheriff that is trained for it had left early, but, but, but I mean, to anybody that knows dogs, the dog was barking when anyone would come too close and trying to keep people away from me. He didn't bite the patron that woke me up that, you know, yelled, wake up, even though he was closer to me, he clearly didn't perceive him as a threat. You know what I mean? And, uh, grabbing a hammer on the way to go deal with a loose dog seems to me to, to indicate aggressive intent because I don't know in what way a hammer is possibly a, an appropriate tool to deal with a canine. So, well, Mr. Roberson testified that that the dog, that, that the dog jumped up to uh, Mr. Joshua's neck, which is an extremely dangerous situation. So the evidence suggests to me that the hammer was used in defense of Mr. Joshua. He didn't just bring out a hammer and start striking your dog out of the blue. I mean, it was in order to protect someone who's being mauled. I mean, I, I only know what I see in the video and what I can read in the reports, but in, in, in the video, the dog isn't jumping up to his neck. He's on the ground being, being tugged by his leash and punched. And in the statement where uh, Mr. Robeson says he grabs the hammer, at that point, he says, only that he had heard barking, not anything about anyone being attacked, just that he heard barking, which indicates to me that like, even if it was unintentional and unconscious, he probably was perceived by the dog as, as being aggressive and a threat. And, and, and again, that's my fault for, for, for falling asleep. I, I just, I'm not used to having my truck stolen and being stuck here. Okay, has Dorje bitten anyone aside from the two incidents that we've discussed here today? No. Has there been other no. bites? Never. Okay, and uh, any other information you'd like me to know about your dog? You started to tell me that uh, your dog is a service dog, he gets along well with cats. Anything else you'd like me to know? Um. Uh, yeah. Um, so I I want so the witnesses that I emailed the phone numbers for. Um, do they sure. speak next? Is that how that yes. works? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, I know she didn't mention it when she was uh, talking, but like Officer Pone had told me that at the shelter he's been gentle and good natured, and the staff all likes him, gets along with him. Um, I can't. Officer Cohn no. had her time to testimony. I'll, I'll, I'll ask Captain Corso if she has in, any information about that. Uh, I can't have you testify to hearsay. Okay. Okay. I mean, I guess what but, I'm trying to say is, like, in 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 eight and a half years with the dog, he's his 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 nature is not aggressive at all. He's a very gentle being, and it's not his nature for something like this to happen. It's just my. Uh, you know, my, my culpability in, in not having enough savings, I guess, to afford hotels here when my truck gets stolen and ending up in this situation. I mean, I don't know. I, I've never had my vehicle stolen before. It's a very unusual situation. I don't know, I, you know, how to have avoided him being in public at all once the truck was stolen. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll circle back to you later in the hearing. Uh, let's turn to your witnesses now. Officer Hurtup, please call the next witness. Thank you, hearing officer K. What I want to call Miss Antoinette Lewis. Okay, and just and if you're not a if if you didn't personally witness this incident, I, I am going to limit testimony about the dog's good character um, to about three minutes. So. What would you like me to, are you, were you an uh, eyewitness to the incident that happened on January 16th? No, I was not. Okay, and uh, what would you like, what is your relationship to Mr. Green? Hearing Officer uh, Kay, well, um, she does need to spell her name and say it for the record, please. Thank you, Ms. Polk. Okay. Ma'am, could you please state your name and spell it for the record? 
My name is Antoinette Lewis. A as an apple. N as in Nancy. T as in Tom. I as in N. O as in on. E as in Nancy. Okay, let me say A U T. Uh, A U T. I have now got lost. E as in elephant. T as in Tom. T as in Tom. T as in elephant. That's Antoinette Lewis is. L is in love, E is an elephant, W as in Washington, I is in S as in Sam. Got it. Thank you. And what is your relationship to Mr. Green? Uh, Mr. Green lived with me for a while with Dorje. Okay. Ah, okay. What would you like me to know about Dorje? Dorje is a really special dog. He's very caring. Um, he's much in love with his owner. But he lives with me and another dog here, and we've never had a problem, ever. So I know San Francisco is kind of hard for him because he is from, you know, he lives outside. So San Francisco is like a little close corners for him. So he, that's why he doesn't bring him here. So, you know, um, but he is a good dog, you know. He, he's How long did Jorge live with you? Uh, almost a year. About a hey, year. When was that? When was that? Um, about four years ago. Okay. Just before he moved to his home, they lived with me in San Francisco, and that's when we realized that this is just too close corners for Dorje. You know that he needed okay. to be. You know. So have you seen Dorje in the past four years? Oh, yes. I've seen them often. I've been to their house. They come back here. So I do see them often. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. I appreciate your time and testimony here today. Officer Huerta, okay. would you please, please call your next witness? Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, what I want to call Mr. Alex uh, Sorosensky. Hello, sir. Please uh, state your name and spell it for the record. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, my name is um, Alex, last name S-O-S-E-N-S-K-Y, Sosensky. Hello, sir. Uh, what's your relationship to Mr. Green? <laughs> uh, so I've, I've known Mr. Green and I've known uh, George A. for um, the better part of George's life and about you know, the last uh, eight years of, uh, of Mr. Green's life. Um, and, okay. Uh, after and I, I actually, I was um, kind of by his side. I live in San Francisco, and I'm uh, one of the only close friends that Mr. Green has here in uh, in the uh, um, the Greater Bay Area, um, here on this side of the uh, on this side of the bay. Um, a lot of times, I would uh, I would invite um, I would invite Mr. Green in, uh, George, over to my home uh, which is a house uh, in which I also own animals I have two dogs and also a cat uh, and at one point um, at one point um, you know Brandon uh, Brandon stayed with me you know overnight and um, Georgia was also uh, present no uh, no problems even with the uh, even with the cat um, that's just a little bit of a background on Georgia as far as how he reacts around people that he's never met before and uh, around animals that he's not familiar with. Um, from my personal experience, I've never been concerned, uh, not once, with leaving my cat in the same room with, uh, with uh, Mr. Green's dog uh, and walking out of there. Uh, it wouldn't be in the back of my head that uh, something may happen. Um, uh, enough about that. Uh, I wanted to kind of get into uh, a, a few days before uh, this incident happened and kind of uh, the events that led up to it, uh, which I, knowing, you know, the uh, situation in its entirety, uh, I strongly feel as though the events that led up to this, um, the unusual circumstances behind uh, what led um, Mr. Green, uh, he, uh, what ended him up in the library that evening with uh, George and, uh, and what it was that uh, ultimately what you know caused him to to be so tired to where he finally he finally just didn't have enough 
you know, energy to even keep his eyes open, and he he broke down and fell asleep. Basically, he couldn't, you know, couldn't okay. deal with what was uh, what was going on. So, and uh, so tell me what you, happened. But so tell me what happened. Instead of telling me what you're gonna tell me, just go ahead and tell. Me. Right. So uh, so all, basically. All Basically, I get a phone call from Brandon a few days before uh, the situation with Georgia happens. Uh, Brandon's very flustered. He's, you know, having uh, trouble catching his breath and putting uh, his sentences together. What I get from it is that his truck was stolen. Um, um, I'm sure it's in the uh, paperwork that uh, Brandon does not live anywhere near the barrier. He lives in um, Grass Valley, which is uh, three hours away. Um, without traffic, so not only uh, not only does he explain the concern for the fact that there's nobody at his home, and it's been an unsecure. It's there's been break-ins in to his home. Uh, it's a very rural rural area. There's a lot of squatters. So not only did he have that going on, he also uh, had to stick around in the city where he was didn't have a, a home or a place to stay. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, he doesn't have very much friends here. Me being one of them, uh, I tried to accommodate him um, to make things a little bit easier through the process. But I can only do you know as much as I I can do for him. I also have a, a life, a job, uh, a career. Uh, I run a business. I own an insulation company that's growing. Um, and uh, so, like I said, I tried to accommodate them, um, but at some point, uh, Brandon needed internet access uh he needed to be able to get information on how what the steps would be to to get his truck back uh because it's not exactly clear uh you know what the process is brandon unfortunately is not familiar with that process at all uh which you know that landed him at the library as well to 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 be able to know how to follow up and to not just be sitting in the city where basically his dog is kind of put in a in an unusual situation where the uh the dog doesn't it's not familiar with spending days on end uh in an unfamiliar place kind of like in a in a in a place of distress almost uh so yeah basically Brandon was Brandon and I like I said I've known him for about 8 years he's been he was going through in that during that time the the roughest I want to say period since I've known him and it's I, I looked at the videos I read the uh, I read all of the uh, statements and the summaries and there's just there's just a lot of things that uh, that concern me uh, something that was mentioned was the fact that the uh, the uh, situation was approached with a weapon so basically there was an armed gentleman uh, call it what you will, I, I think that a ball-peen hammer uh, would be classified a weapon if I was walking down the street with it, uh, and I couldn't really explain why I had it. That would most likely be considered carrying a weapon to wherever I was going. I don't see exactly how it would differ in a way where somebody's responding to a situation where they're not familiar with what's going on. There may be a threat. There may not be, um, but... I'm sure that the dog, just like any human, just like anybody else, would probably freak out and respond in a way where their instinct would tell them to defend themselves, a kind of a fight or flight sort of reaction to someone, a big gentleman walking with a weapon, a hammer, you know. In the, Mr. Sazetsky, you know, I, actually, uh, you're not Mr. Green's attorney, and sort of your analysis on the evidence is, uh, not as important as your experience with the dog and uh, yeah. any in the lead up to what happened, you know, is also relevant. So if you could focus your testimony yeah. on that. Um, I, I'd I'd appreciate it. I'm trying to stick a little bit I'm trying to stick a little bit more to uh you know to the facts. Um so uh, it was mentioned by one of the uh, one of the witnesses that uh he saw a, uh, basically a patron uh, who was sitting uh, not too far away from Brandon basically wake him up by actually physically shaking him and putting, you know, his, his hands on Brandon. Uh, my question and my, you know, so that I'm asking myself, uh, and I'm sure everyone should be asking themselves, is why didn't the dog at that point turn to the concerned patron 
whose intentions were to wake Brandon up, uh, wh- why was there no reaction to that by the dog? The, re- the dog reacted to basically what he he had had perceived, and the dog perceived the threat. Um, like uh, like I said, I'm sure you know, I'm sure that's understandable. And uh, in the video, as I, as 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 seen. In the small video, I don't know why there's only a little tiny bit of a of a video there, but it looks as though the Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rinsky, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you uh, one more minute, and then uh, okay. we're gonna turn to the next witness. Okay, okay. Miss Polk, please keep going. So if uh, if you'd notice in the video, if you'd be able to play it back um, to yourselves, it looks as though the dog is pulled by the leash. Towards the uh, towards the security guard, the security guard then punches the dog. The dog then begins to back up, which explains why the dog comes out of his leash. And then basically, the security guard pulls the leash, ends up in uh, the security guard's hand. The security guard starts punching the dog. And I, at that point, I don't think that blame could be laid on Georgie or on the security guards. It just became kind of a free for all at that point. I, I would I would say. And uh did Georgie but, but, but Mr. Sorinsky Sosinski, you weren't there, yeah. correct? Uh I wasn't I wasn't there but I reviewed like I said, all of everything that was given okay. to uh Brandon. I looked at it with him and discussed and you know, I think I okay. kinda of asked him the right questions to better okay. understand it and from my knowledge, based on my knowledge of Georgie and Brandon. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate your time and testimony here today. I'm gonna to move on to the next witness, uh, Officer Huerta. Who is your next witness? Thank you, hearing Officer Kate. What I wanna call Mr. Chris Gibbs. Hello, sir. Please state your name and spell it for the record. Hearing Officer Chris Kate, would I no longer show Mr. Gibbs being on the call? Would you like me to call them again? Do we have any other witnesses? Officer Huerta? No, we do not hear an officer Kaywood. Okay, Ms. Paul, please please try to call Chris Gibbs. Uh, and everyone, we can just wait. Okay. Our previous witness is going to get another chance to speak. Uh, I'm going to give the complainant three minutes to make a closing comment, but not additional witnesses. Any last Ms. I'm sorry. Hearing Officer Kay, hearing Officer Kay what I've, I've attempted him twice to no avail. Okay, thank you. So we're going to uh, proceed. I'm going to turn to uh, Mr. Joshua. Are you still with us, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm going to give you three minutes to make any closing comments that you'd like to make or respond to uh, the evidence that you've heard. So go ahead. Uh, yes, ma'am. From the evidence that I've heard, um, I'm, it appears. I'm so that, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I do have Chris Gibbs hearing Officer Kaywood. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Joshua. If you could just bear with us one more second. Oh, we'll sure. go to the witnesses. Okay, Mr. Gibbs, uh, please state your name and spell it for the record. My name is Christopher Gibbs, C H R I S T O P A T R. Gibbs, G I B B S. I'm a friend of okay. Brennan's. Okay, what would you like me to know about Dorje? Dorje is a great dog. Um, gets along great with, I live on a farm. I live on 20 acres up in the foothills and, um, I have chickens. I have cats, um, another dog, um, I have a newborn child. I mean, George is, has been fine with all other animals and people that, I mean, he's just, he's just a really kind dog. As far as I know, I don't see him, you know, aggressive at all. 
I've never seen him aggressive towards anything. So that's uh yeah, Thank you, Mr. Uh, Gibbs. How much how how many times would you say you've interacted with Dorje? How many times of what? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, can you approximate how many times that you've personally interacted with Dorje? Um, I've known Dorje for a good part of his life. Um, he used to live on my property. Um, I rented Brendan a house. And, um, I mean, countless times. You know, I've been around Dorje for probably, you know, a solid four years of his life. Okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time and testimony here today. All right. Thank you. Okay. Tur turning to Mr. Joshua, thanks for your patience with us as we work through uh, we have an unusually large number of witnesses. So thank you for your patience, Mr. Joshua. Uh, any closing comments that you have? Any response to Mr. Green's evidence? Uh, everyone else, please be on mute. Uh, yes, ma'am. I just want to reiterate that um, Dolph's owner was unresponsive in a public facility with a dangerous animal. Uh, he has no control of his dog when he's unconscious. And it appears to have happened twice. Um, that's very risky to me. And um, regardless of, you know, you know, his excuses, what happened to him, there's still some responsibility that comes to holding the dog, especially a pit bull. And um, I'm sorry, it's just, um, I don't know, after hearing this is witnesses in his testimony, um, I, I don't know. They just, I haven't changed my feelings. Thank you, Mr. Joshua. Uh, Mr. Green, I'm going to give you three minutes to make any closing comments that you'd like to make. Ms. Polk, please keep time. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I just want to say again that I feel terrible um, for for the gentleman's injuries and for the whole incident. Um, Obviously, it's it's completely my responsibility, and I wish that there's something I could do to change it, but obviously there's not. Um, what I can say is, as soon as Dorje is returned, he he's I'll take him out into the woods to the farm where he's comfortable and familiar, and not ever bring him back to San Francisco ever for any reason. Um, and, you know, if there's any kind of behavioral uh, training that that you would recommend, you know, I'm, I'm happy to bring him to a trainer again. Um, you know, he went to a trainer when he was a puppy, but I mean, that's a long time ago. Um, you know, anything that would help to ensure that there's no danger to the public in the future, I'm happy to accommodate, just please. Don't kill my dog. He's a, a service dog. He's literally kept me alive. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, Captain Corso, I have two questions for you. The first question is if there are any behavioral notes for this dog while he's been in custody at Animal Care and Control. And the second question I have, well, let's go ahead and answer that one if, if you know. Yeah, there are behavioral notes. Um, I, I was looking through the case, so I didn't see them in there, but um, the, the notes that we have from 2019 is that um, Dorje was checked to see if he could go out into the park with volunteers. Um, however, it was decided that he should only do outside of Kennel Enrichment, which means um, a volunteer visiting him from outside and just interacting with him through the mesh. Uh, and due to the severity of the bites in this case, it's the same. He can only have someone visiting him in the kennel, um, but we deemed him not safe to bring out to the yard. Okay, thank you. And does the Department of Animal Care and Control have a rec recommendation in this matter? And everyone, once again, the ultimate decision is mine. Uh, I'm an independent hearing officer. So although uh, both agencies have the opportunity to make a recommendation, ultimately uh, I decide. 
Go ahead, Captain Corso. Sure. Um, so while the protection of the owner is in line with resource guarding, the severity of the attack was beyond the context of a dog working properly. Uh, it was a disproportionate and protract protracted response, which resulted in severe injuries to a grown adult. On the bite scale, this would register as a level five, and this was not the first serious bite. So due to a poor prognosis and a likelihood of uh, repeat offenses, ACC recommends humane euthanasia to protect public safety. Thank you. Can you explain to me uh, or explain to the people on the call what a <coughs> level, five, level five bite is? Sure. So uh, I'll do it in, in kind of relation to um, uh, the, the injuries in this case. Um, there was complete avulsion, complete removal of uh, tissue and skin. Um, there was another one that was partial removal of tissue, which is where you see kind of like that uh, flap of skin or flesh. And they were uh, tearing and gaping wounds. Um, you know, like I said, this this is a mauling. Um, and that's that's the level five, that's the highest level. Thank you. Uh, Officer Huerta, does the San Francisco Police Department have a recommendation in this case? Uh, yes, hearing officer, uh, Kate, well, due to the history of the bites and the severity of those bites, the SFPD thinks that Dorji should be uh, humanely euthanized. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Joshua, do you, I'm gonna give you a, an opportunity to briefly respond to the recommendations if you have additional comments. Um, I agree with the recommendations. Um, I would hate for, I mean, we, the public library has children, older people there. I can only imagine if it was someone else. I mean, I just wouldn't even want to take that chance again. I, I, I stick with the recommendations. Okay. Uh, Mr. Green, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make, uh, uh, to respond. I, I know this is a difficult situation for you, um, and it certainly gives me no joy to euthanize a dog. Uh, I know our, our pet, pets bring us love and companionship, but at the same time, it's my responsibility to protect public safety. I'm concerned about your dog. Um, I've listened to the recommendations made by the officials on the line. Is there any response that you'd like to make at this time? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I understand that the bite was, was, was severe. Um, what I can tell you is he, he will not be a danger to the public because he will be on my ranch where no one is approaching him with a ball peen hammer, which would be a high level of assault if it were uh, a human, that would be assault with gross bodily injury. And, um, you know, on the ranch, he's never going to be in a situation where he feels threatened like that. There's no need to kill my dog to keep the public safe because he's not ever coming back to this city. He will be on the on bench where he's never been any sort of a problem because he's not in situations where he feels threatened. I understand, I'm not trying to blame the security officers. I understand that they're not trained for this and that they don't know, you know, you know, the, the, the appropriate way to, to to approach the dog, whereas like had you know had officer or agent Pone been there, you know I don't think it, it would have been a problem because, she, you know she has training she understands that like, if if a dog is surrounded by three fully grown adults holding weapons and yelling get him get him get him that they're gonna feel threatened. Um, I mean, there's old people and children in the library that day. There's other patrons in the library that day. None of them were bitten because none of them were grabbing the dog by the leash and punching him in the face. Okay, thank you, Mr. Green. I'll give this matter my careful attention. Thank you uh, to all the witnesses, the complainant. Uh, I'm uh, sorry. Mr. Joshua. Who, who uh. is this? Hi, uh, this is Erin Hewitt. I wasn't sure no, no, if no, it was. No, no. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. You've, okay. are, you've already been advised that your testimony is not admissible. But thank you. Got it. Uh, I did. Okay. I did provide your your email. Uh, your email was provided to Mr. Green. If you want to talk to him privately, that's fine. But uh, testimony from someone in Baltimore that doesn't know this dog uh, and to have no, nothing relevant what, to offer the disputed issue is a fact. Is, is I'm okay. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. This this hearing has concluded. I'm going to issue a written ruling within 15 days. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Officer Huerta, please close this hearing. Gonna... Thank you, Hearing Officer Kaywood. This concludes today's hearing. We are off the record at 1429 hours. Thank you.